JFT just fair and direct. Okay, hello and good morning everyone. Welcome to JFD Traders Espresso with me, Tedderson Charles, because today is the 8th of July 2021. So yep, welcome everyone, welcome to this Thursday's morning session where we're gonna have a very quick look at the markets, a few of the charts, the usual stuff. But before we do that, as always, let's quickly have a read through our risk disclaimer. So the content we produce does not constitute an investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. As always, I'll give you a few seconds to read the rest and we can continue. Okay, so now then, um, also just before we jump in into the charts, as always, quick uh, mentioning of our JFD YouTube channel, to which you can always subscribe to in order not to miss any of our upcoming videos, and of course our JFD Bank website, and specifically our JFD research page. So if you click here on the top here, and it'll take you to our page, which we update on a daily basis. So yep, check us out here on JFDBank.com and click on the, as I said, a research tab right there on the top. So. Now then, uh, jumping into the charts, the first one I want to pick up here is the actually Nikkei 225. So just going to go through a few um, instruments that I looked at yesterday and uh, basically some, some new ones. Um, but uh, yeah, um, for now, for now, guys, um, looking at this picture is not really uh, very welcoming for the bulls. And uh, yep, we're seeing a nice, bit, a nice decline here. So in a way, the technical idea is working out and uh, we're still seeing that uh, kind of continued move lower. What I said to you recently uh, in the beginning of this week, I said that if we drop and stay below that 28,565 territory, then yes, uh, we could consider maybe a bit of a further move lower, especially if the uh, price continues to trade below that hurdle. And yes, that's what we are getting right now. So we're getting that drop. Uh, we're getting that move below that 27,795 territory. So yep, uh, for now, I mean, uh, let's aim for the downside. However, if, if something changes and we climb back above this hurdle, back above this barrier, then yep, maybe. Uh, the upside uh, scenario could be back on the table. However, at the moment, it seems to be—it seems not to be the case. Uh, so yeah, let's see how this is gonna play out. Um, Hong Kong's Hang Seng Index, guys. I mean, this is um, basically a little bit more devastating here. I mean, you can see a nice good drop here, lower. Um, so the idea kind of is working out. And what I said to you that if we drop below this hurdle below this area, below this um, lower side of the rising channel, then yes, in a way, a further move lower could be possible. However, this is where one of those examples where uh, actually the, the, da the, the daily candle did not close um, below uh, this area and instead it started kind of climbing back up. However, uh, for me, I mean, uh, for the upside, I need to see at least a push somewhere, uh, somewhere at least back above this barrier because this would place the um, the price back above all of its EMAs and potentially more, uh, more buyers could join in. But here, uh, all this area right here would be somewhat of a neutral one for me, even though we would be back in the rising channel pattern but still I would be a little bit on the careful side but as you can see this morning we saw an open uh, below this uh, area below this uh, lower side of the rising channel um, we opened slightly below the 200 day EMA and then yep this is the result we're getting so now uh, we broke the um, the lowest point of May we broke the lowest point of March can we stay below that lowest point of March well we'll just have to wait and see if we do then yep my next target is the uh, the high point of November of 2020 and that's roughly around the 27,040 mark right here and then of course yes we'll take it from there uh, now jumping into another um, another index and here is the German index and yes we have uh, moved higher here and uh, we closed in the positive territory 
back above this upside line. Um, the only thing is, of course, to keep in mind the overall situation in the markets. Of course, uh, looking at the cash index, we're seeing that the price is uh, trading a little bit on the lower side. It's currently trading below, below uh, around the 15,664, 65 territory. Um, so yeah, um, it's kind of stuck here near the subside line. So what what's more important is that actually we can get rid of this upside line. It's no longer needed because we violated it twice and uh, yep now um, now what I'm gonna focus here on will be this little range um, and that range is roughly between the um, let me just double check that very quickly so roughly between the 15,752 53 territory on the upside and the uh, 15,456 15, 15,456 territory on the downside so uh, what what I'm going to look at here is, of course, I'm going to keep an eye on these two barriers. If we eventually get a breakout and we see the daily candle staying uh, outside this little range, then yes, we'll uh, um, adjust accordingly and uh, then, yep, we'll consider the next short term directional move, guys. I can see in the chat room here, Erica, good morning to you too. I hope you're having a wonderful start of Thursday. Um, but coming back to the charts here, yep, uh, like the next index here that I wanted to keep an eye on is NASDAQ 100. So, of course, NASDAQ is, uh, or should I say, was hitting the, the kind of the, uh, the news the, the, this, this week. I mean, uh, technology got a boost and that gave a, a NASDAQ a boost as well. So, um, after we confirmed a new all-time high yesterday uh, near the 14,891 territory, the index reversed lower and now it's um, looking at the technical or the cash index right now it's trading currently at around uh, 14,800 zone so not far from uh, from where uh, it closed yesterday but of course it will be very interesting to see actually if we if we are going to move a night um, get a nice uh, push higher again because this is where it's going to be interesting um, just bear with me one moment. Uh, so this candle here, um, let's see if this is not going to end up being a somewhat of a like a hammer uh, reversal, uh, hand, hammer candlestick, like a re which is a reversal signal. Um, so yeah, uh, that's going to be quite interesting. Um, if it if it is the case, then well, I mean maybe a bit of a, a larger correction to the downside might be quite healthy for uh, this index and then of course we will take it from there um, if um, if this upside line of course fails to provide support then yes lower levels could be met but at the moment at the moment yes uh, we will be very careful very cautious here and uh, at the moment what I'm gonna say here is that if you want to aim for the upside well wait for that push above the 14,891 territory right here and then yes uh, this would confirm a forthcoming higher high uh, more buyers could join in but um, for now I will probably consider this maybe as a bit of a um, as a bit of a hammer here uh, which like I said could be um, uh, could be a reversal signal so let's see how this is gonna play out of course let's not rush into anything but at the moment it looks quite quite interesting um, DXY uh, dollar index so yep uh, came back to this this downside resistance line taken from the high of the 25th of September of 2020 um, now for me the big question here is I mean can we finally overcome it I mean we did have a few overshoots here yesterday and this, this morning uh, we did climb above that 92.74 territory but we didn't really stay above that area so I need that excuse me for the slight pause I need that push above the 92.74 territory in mm, and, and uh, we'd like to see that daily candle staying above that area in order to go for some higher levels so um, like I said long story short we, we are at a very interesting spot here right now so can we um, can we move higher? That's going to be the big question. Uh, and of course, if we fail to move above this area, um, what I'm looking for here is a drop somewhere below this 92 territory in order to consider maybe a bit of a larger correction to the downside. 
Now jumping into gold and so far so good. Um, the idea here is working out in the beginning of this week. If you remember, I talked about this idea that uh, we might see a push higher. Maybe uh, we, we could end up drifting towards that 1800 level. Um, and uh, we, if we find resistance somewhere here, uh, somewhere near this area, then yep, another slide could be possible. So for now, I'm kind of considering this idea. Um, I want to see if we actually gonna uh, get a further move south here. So far, I'm like I said, I'm gonna keep this arrow like this, just because to just to point out the initial uh, idea, the initial scenario that I drawn here. So yep, uh, let's see if this is gonna play out. For now, I'm a little bit on the bearish side. As long as the um, as long as DXY uh, continues to show strength, if DXY suddenly reverses. Uh, back to the downside, then we might see gold popping higher. Similar story with silver, of course. Uh, yep, we're seeing also a nice reversal from this area. I spoke about this. Um, this this area near the upside line here, taken from the um, from the low of the tw 18th of March of 2020. Um, so yeah, we found the resistance somewhere here and now we're drifting back down. However, as I said before, I need to see a drop below the 25.71 territory right here in order to get a little bit more comfortable with uh, further declines. As at the same time, we'll keep an eye on this 200 EMA just for that um, extra precaution. If we, um, if we drop and we stay below that, then of course, yes, more sellers could join in. Now WTI oil and uh, yeah, uh, beautiful move to the downside. So and we most importantly we managed to break the upside line and stay below the 72.68 territory. I spoke about this level, guys, and at the same time we managed to stay below the 21-day EMA. So everything's looking quite uh, interesting here for these sellers. So in a way, if you manage to capture this drop here, wonderful. Um, what I'm going to say right now is that um, we might see maybe a bit of a dr drift back up here, or maybe we would test of this area, um, and if it continues to provide resistance, and I mean the 72.68 and together with the 21-day EMA, then yes, another slide could be possible. Um, Litecoin. Uh, so Litecoin still respects this downside line. To be honest, there's not much to talk about here and the fact that, yes, the downside line taken from the high of the 20th of May is still respected, then, well, I mean, yep, we could continue, we will continue uh, to the downside at the moment. Like I said, unfortunately for all the crypto bulls, well, I mean, we, we uh, the cryptos do well, they do start following the technical scenarios, technical pictures, so basically, um, yeah, so you, well, we'll just have to kind of, it's not always up, up, up and away. Um, for now, like I said, looking at this picture, yes, uh, the trend is still to the downside. Um, in order to get a little bit more comfortable with lower levels, what you can do here is, of course, keep your eyes on the uh, this, this little hurdle, the 130.62 right here. And yes, if we drop below that, then lower levels could be met. Now, AUDUSD, guys. So this one's quite interesting, and uh, yep, as you can see, why we are climbing. Uh, well, not climbing. Sorry, we are moving lower here. We're dropping below this uh, 0 0.7462 territory, and then now the big. Uh, no, well, I'll repeat myself again. The big question again: Can we see a further move lower? But at the moment, guys, I am bearish on this one. And uh, looking at, at if we do see a uh, actually a drop, if you want to be just a little bit more careful and cautious, if we do see a drop below the uh, the current lowest point of July near the 0 0.74. 445 territory right here then yes um, this will confirm a forthcoming lower low and potentially attract more sellers into the game where my next target is the 0 0.7342 territory or actually let me just grab this little swing here and uh, actually let me re re reuse one of these lines so this is going to be my next target the 0 0.7370 uh, 0 0.7373 territory around here and then we'll take it from there AUDCHF, so um, beautiful move here, and this is just, I mean, technically it's so beautiful here, I mean, I cannot ex express my exci excitement. So, basically, what I said to you previously, that in order to go for some higher levels, not only did we need to see a break of this downside line, but also we, see, we would need to see the daily candle staying above the 0 0.6981 territory. As you can see, uh, we had that push, but we didn't really have the daily candle staying um, 
above that barrier. Instead, we drifted back down and stayed below the downside line again. And uh, yep, this is what I said to you yesterday that this increases again the chances for a further move lower. So far, uh, what I need here to see is a nice good drop below the 0 0.6892 territory right here. And if we drop below that and we stay below that 200 EMA, well, uh, EMA, then yes, uh, further declines could be possible. EURUSD JPY broke the upside line, stayed below it. We had a bit of a fluctuation here and uh, also stayed below this 110.42 territory. So now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to uh, aim for uh, aim for lower levels. In a way, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of, uh, although... Although the, I'm kind of, uh, I was I was talking about DXY uh, pushing maybe to the upside. Uh, in this situation, USDJPY, it seems that maybe the equities could retrace a little bit. And if the equities will start retracing, that means that uh, the yen could put its uh, safe haven cape on on itself. And uh, even though the dollar is also seen as a safe haven, still the yen could out outweigh um, the US dollar, and this could be that little battle of the the so-called safe havens so here i mean like i said if keep your eyes on the equities if equities start drifting uh nicely to the downside then well i mean we could see usd jpy also following suit uh usd cad is a different story i this follows uh, this follows oil of course i mean due to the canadian dollar uh, kind of um, having a direct link uh, with the price of uh, well with the price of oil um, so yep as you can see we are seeing the uh, the US dollar against the Canadian dollar pushing higher we broke this 1.2487 territory so I'm gonna stick to the upside on this one um, also if uh, as I mentioned yesterday as well when I was looking at euro against the Russian ruble um, in, in general uh, other economies that hell uh, that kind of depend on oil uh, their currencies might devaluate a little bit so again this is something for you to kind of keep in mind um, but as I said yes for now looking at this specific picture um, I'm leaning a little bit more towards the upside as long as the pair stays above that 1.2487 territory uh, GBP JPY guys so uh, this one's drifting lower as well so yep as you can see the logic that I'm following here so the uh, yen there is uh, some yen buying happening right now so so yeah uh, at the moment guys I mean let's see how this is gonna play out but um, for now what I would like to see here is this is probably my personal preference is the a drop below this hurdle the current uh, actually not the current but the lowest point of June and near the 151.32 zone right here and then yes uh, we could um, make our way lower here and at the same time we would be placed below the 100 EMA so potentially more sellers could uh, could jump in um, euro against the JP, JPY so yeah also seeing a nice drop and uh, also looking at the lowest point of June here uh, near the 130.05 level and of course then yes uh, if um, if uh, if if it, if it stays below this then yes uh, we could we could consider a further move towards the 200 EMA that's what I'm gonna initially aim for um, and uh, then yeah we'll, we'll take it from there another thing just just to kind of keep in mind from the technical side is now if we draw this um, or actually not this one because these these are all going to be tentative these downside lines that I'm going to draw here this one's a tentative one but and this one is a tentative one as well so if we're going to draw this then what we're going to see here ourselves is a uh, potential descending triangle uh, which of course according to all the TA, TA rules tends to break to the downside but um, if by any chance this territory continues to provide support then maybe a bit of a rebound here could be possible maybe we could see a push towards this downside line and then basically form a better uh, descending triangle which uh, eventually if gets if violates the lower side of it the at, at 1.130.05 then yes <clears throat> this will confirm a forthcoming lower low and uh, further declines could be possible guys so 
keep that in mind. Um, now, in terms of um, Euro against the Swiss franc, now this one's interesting and I mentioned this one before. Um, so far we are within this uh, falling channel pattern, but as you can see, um, we at the same time we have this uh, upside support line right here, um, and uh, let's see if this is going to play out uh, play out nicely. So if uh, this upside li support line taken from the low of the 18th of May is going to hold, and if it does, then yes, a nice rebound here back up could be possible. Now, um, the reason why I'm still kind of considering this uh, upside line is the fact that uh, recently when we were drifting lower here and we were testing the lower bound of the uh, the falling channel, we kind of broke it, but then we found support near this upside line and then we rebounded and look at this, we made our way uh, back to the upper side of the falling channel and uh, yep, that's uh, where we got a hold up, a hold, hold up and uh, we drifted back down. So now we're again coming closer to this upside line. This time it's going to be interesting to see if, if this area holds. If it does, then we might see a nice rebound and a push higher, but if it doesn't, well guys, um, maybe a further move towards the lower side of the falling channel could be possible. And uh, finally, your USD, just a very quick uh, update here. So we're currently trading around at 1.18 territory. Um, yeah, again, at the moment, I would say that um, for now, I'm kind of, we managed to reach our target, first of all. We managed to reach our target. My target was that um, if we break this 1.1847 territory, my, my aim is the 1.1794, where we got a hold up, as you can see. And uh, now, um, let's see if we can... Uh, stay here for a while. If we can, uh, then maybe a bit of a rebound here could be possible. However, if it gets broken again, then, well, this opens the door, guys, towards further declines, and, uh, well, I mean, then we could aim for that lowest point of March, and then we'll take it from there, guys. So, uh, that's kind of pretty straightforward. Um, I hope you found it useful, guys. Thank you very much for your views, your likes, your comments, guys. I really can, can see that. So, thank you very much for that. Really, really appreciate. I, I just basically hope you found it useful, so this material. So, um, if you want to catch me tomorrow morning, as always, at my Trader's Espresso, that's 6, six o'clock GMT time. For now, have a wonderful trading day. Stay safe, guys. Have your stop losses in place, and everything will be fine. Thank you very much, and bye-bye.